North Korea is set to hold a key party meeting this week. This is when the regime reviews a digital state policies and sets policy goals for the new year. Now, what to expect from this year's edition? We turn to Yakovic's list this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for joining us, Yako. What do you think the North will announce as its biggest achievements of the year? Its spy satellite launch will no doubt be one of them, right? Yes, certainly. Uh, North Korea successfully launched its reconnaissance satellite into Earth orbit before South Korea could do the same. Mm. Uh, and that is symbolically a big achievement. But putting up only one spy satellite is practically of limited advantage. Uh, still, for a country that is under international sanctions and with options for international cooperation in technology that are limited, this is an impressive achievement. Uh, another impressive achievement is the call sent out to North Korean citizens in other countries that it is time to finally come back home to North Korea uh, after three and a half years of being shut out because of the uh, uh, self-imposed corona isolation. As far as I'm aware, this hasn't caused a large number of defections or high-level defections. Uh, and I imagine that is something that the government in Pyongyang was probably worried about possibly happening, especially after so long uh, of having only uh, long-distance contact and limited contact uh, with the fatherland. Uh, now, in November 2022, so just about a little bit over a year ago, Kim Jong-un first brought out his daughter into this public spotlight uh, at the test firing of an intercontinental ballistic missile. Since then, he has taken her to a range of public events this year. Uh, so at the moment, we don't know yet whether Kim Jong-un has decided that his daughter will succeed him um, in, the, in the event of his death or incapacitation. But if that is the case, then what he is doing by taking her to these events and having her photographs appear in the state-controlled press uh, with titles like Beloved Child and Noble Child, then he is making her known to the North Korean public and creating her legitimacy uh, and clearing the way for her future. So that's kind of an achievement uh, as well. Now, uh, the, in terms of diplomacy, North Korea has managed to make its relationship with Russia much stronger and closer than it has been mm -hmm. since the end of the Soviet Union 30 years ago. Uh, now, apparently, North Korea achieved at least one shipment of aims to Russia to use in its war against Ukraine. So that's also an achievement, although I have seen reports that the quality of those weapons leaves much to be desired. Uh, and then lastly, in terms of agriculture, North Korea has surprised many by bringing in a bigger harvest uh, than the previous year. According to South Korea's Rural Development Administration, the crop output this year in North Korea was 6 percent up on last year which is quite a good achievement, given that last year the UN estimated that almost half the North Korean population suffered from malnutrition. But uh, while 6% is good news, there are still food production shortages, which North Korea compensated for by importing grain from both China and Russia. So many developments made a past, during the past year. Now, Yako, I want to go back to the, the North Spy satellite launch. We, what we do know yeah. for sure is that North Korea will not satisfy with the just one reconnaissance satellite launch. How likely is it that North Korea will actually provide a timeline for another reconnaissance uh, satellite launch? Yes, as I said before, putting only one spy satellite into orbit is a practically limited advantage. You want to have a network. Uh, and according to one military expert that I spoke with, in order to have pretty consistent remote censoring coverage of a location like South Korea or the United States or Guam, you need to have at least five satellites in lower Earth orbit, each of them moving around uh, the Earth at a, at a, in a different um, uh, orbit so that you can have eyes on the ground at all times. Now, it's hard to know when these launches uh, for future satellites will occur because uh, the dates are set often by... Uh, technical, atmospheric, and other considerations, like perhaps auspicious days in the North Korean calendar. So we might see a launch, for example, around the birth dates of uh, Kim Jong-il uh, mm. in February or Kim Il-sung uh, in April. But there's always a number of factors that work in, in, into um, determining those dates. So it's hard to say at this stage. Definitely. We can that... certainly expect more. Right. That's why there was a delay last time. Now, Kim Jong-un normally issues his uh, New Year's message every year after the key party meeting. Yako, do you think there'll be another round of hostile messages against South Korea and the U.S. like last year? Yeah, as you say, Kim Jong-un, normally he gives a, a New Year's uh, message of some sort. Now, in the past, uh, before, up until 2019, he used to give a speech. Uh, like in, in that year, he gave a televised address sitting in his office at the, at the Workers' Party headquarters. But since 
2020, instead of a New Year's message, he simply gave a report on decisions made at the Workers' Party plenary session. Uh, and so last year, that uh, speech, which he gave in front of the, um, the headquarters building of the Workers' Party Korea, uh, he mentioned, for example, uh, ordering an exponential expansion of the number of nuclear weapons and also the development of a more powerful intercontinental ballistic missile that could strike the U.S. mainland uh, and the launch of the military reconnaissance satellite. So these are all three things that were mentioned in the, uh, the speech at the end of the last plenary session. So we can certainly uh, expect certain... Well, similar things this year, but what exactly he'll say, I, I can't say, I don't want to speculate, but I see no indications that he will strike a reconciliatory tone with either South Korea or the United States. All right, Yago, you mentioned this earlier, the tightening, uh, the developing ties with Russia and China. North Korea will probably brag those um, deepening ties with those countries, right? He certainly could do. Uh, of course, I don't want to speculate too much on what he will and will not say, but mm. if he chooses to talk about the international situation that his country finds itself in, uh, then it will make sense to talk up the strong ties uh, with Russia uh, and also uh, with China to emphasize to the United States and to South Korea that Pyongyang is not alone and that it has powerful friends uh, and allies. Uh, but it's also possible that Kim might not focus on the international situation, but he might focus only on domestic issues uh, and inter-Korean issues and, and, uh, and leave the diplomatic issues for another time. All right, Yako, thanks so much for joining us this morning. You have a great day. Thank you for having us.